Okay, welcome back. So now we are going to focus on the absolute version of the PPP because in here we have what we call the law of one price, but this one, this, this theory is divided in two. First, we have the absolute PPP, and this is the one that we are going to do right now. And then we have the relative PPP, and we are going to do this in the next video. So let's start with absolute PPP. So absolute PPP is similar to my story because in my story, I assume that the only booty that you could buy or sell is this burger, right? So in the absolute PPP, you focus only in one good. That's why it's called absolute because you focus only in one good. And with that good, you intend to forecast what will happen with the, in, with the currency, right? With the exchange rate, sorry. So the original formula looks like this. The price in the US, this is the foreign country. If you multiply the price times the spot rate, the spot rate is the exchange rate in the present, right? That's the meaning of spot. I think you might remember this from first version. And then you have the price in Mexico. This is a local price. So it means that if this theory is correct, if you multiply or divide, again, this is again another thing from, from the last videos. It really depends on how you get the exchange rate. But if you multiply or divide the, the, uh, the price in the foreign country times the spot, you will get the price in the local currency if the theory is correct. So an application for this is if I isolate the spot, I will get something like this spot equals the, I will write it as this local price, local price over the foreign price. This, this is a formula that you can use in your, um, um, in your notes, you can take note of this. And in the end, it doesn't really matter this thing about local and foreign something. Sometimes students get obsessed with understanding what's local and what's foreign. It's all about perspective. But what matters is that if, if, if in my formula, I have a 20, that the price is 20 pesos, and at the bottom, the price in the other country is $1, that means that the exchange rate, the spot rate will be in terms of pesos over dollar. That's what really matters, right? Like don't get obsessed thinking about what's local, what's foreign. Just remember to keep the logic uh, on top, whatever currency I have on top, at the bottom, whatever currency I have at bottom. Let's do an exercise. I think that here I have one. Uh, yes, this is a formula, right? I think uh, yes, it's home over foreign like this. Uh, so let's 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 do let's do an exercise. Here it says, ah, because I think I, I am spoiling something uh, here. I, I I was talking about uh, a burger in my in my in my example in my story, and I told you that there are three three assumptions that have to be filled, right? Like three assumptions that will make the theory work. And if I ask you what what product has or what example has these three assumptions it can be very difficult it, be, it will be very difficult to find which a uh, product or service or whatever can fill these um three three assumptions but uh, about 40 years ago i think the economist newspaper the british newspaper the economist um uh, mentioned that uh, a big mac that's why my my story is about a hamburger the Big Mac, the Big Mac burger from McDonald's kind of uh, accomplish or kind of has these three assumptions. So first they say that the Big Mac is exactly the same burger everywhere in the world. It tastes the same, it's the same size, it's the same ingredients, the same everything. That's what they say. Then the other thing is that there are no restrictions on sale because you can buy a Big Mac anywhere in the world. That's another thing. And probably you will find a Big Mac almost everywhere in the world. And finally, they say that if you divide the amount of transportation costs over the number of Big Macs in the world, you will get something less than one cent or something like that. That's their argument. So they also say like, it's so this number is so small that it doesn't really affect. So according to the, 
to the economists of this newspaper, they say that the Big Mac is, is a good product that can, that can be used to, to, uh, to, to use this theory, right? So in, in my example, I am using the price of a Big Mac. And maybe you know about this. You, maybe you know uh, about the Big Mac index. Because in the Big Mac index, uh, what you try to calculate is this, is the um, what would be the exchange rate, according to this theory, if we can predict that price only using the prices of a Big Mac. And what you are going to calculate is this, the PPP exchange rate. So let me write, the, it's the same formula that I have in here, this one, or it's also the same as um, this one, right? The spot like this. So let's, let's do the calculation. So uh, let the PPP exchange rate, PPP, um, will be, uh, the home currency, the home price, sorry, over the foreign price. So it will be 48 pesos over 5.28 dollars. And the answer to this is, uh, let me use my calculator because I don't have the answer in the presentation, I think. It will be 48 over 5 .20, 9.09090. 9.09090. And this is pesos. This is what I am telling you. Like, just be careful with your exchange rate. What do you have in the end? So it's 9.09090. That's what the theory says that the price should be. And finally, to finish with this video. If this is the theoretical price, this is the PPP price, the power purchasing parity price. And the, what's the real price? What's the price in real life? I think it's 20, right? 20 something. So if the price in real life is more expensive, because it's 20, this is real life, real, and this is PPP. If this is more expensive, we will conclude that the real is overpriced, is very expensive. That's our conclusion, right? I know, and maybe you are thinking, but how can you predict the price of a currency only with one product? I agree with you. And, and let's go slowly. This is the first uh, proposition, the first theory about this. So let's go step by step. Let's. Assuming that this theory is true, only this theory, we can do this analysis. And that's actually what the Big Mac Index uh, has, has been doing for different for, for almost 40 years. It's very popular because it's very easy to calculate. Of course, it's not the most exactly exact tool to calculate or to predict the price. We will have we will learn different things and, 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 and you will learn about this. But this is the basics, right? So in this video, you learned about the absolute, I forgot to write in here, absolute PPP. It's absolute because it's only for one good. And, um, and you learn how to calculate that, right? And you also learn how to uh, analyze the difference between the real and the absolute uh, PPP. So I think that I am done with this video. In the next video, I will talk about the absolute PPP.